Welcome back to the Witcher. Now I'm seeing that the second time this day since originally well, I was recording the Witcher, continuing the story and then it crashed. Since I didn't want to play everything over again, but I as well didn't want that, the vid that I would simply drop this episode, drop simply the day without an episode. I thought that we would start reading all those journals, glossary, characters and what not else. That will come probably from time to time, so that we will take everything possible from the from the Witcher. So let's start with monsters, since those are always interesting. The dog. Occurrence. Dogs are domesticated animals. Even wild dogs, they're close to human settlements. Immunity. None. Susceptibility. Susceptible to fear and knockdown attempts. Experienced witches use the group style while fighting multiple dogs. Tactics. Dogs attacking groups, taking advantage of numeric superiority. Alchemy. Beast fangs, beast liver. Whoever claims that dog is a man's best friend has probably never teamed a wyvern. Anonymous druid. The Algul. Occurrences. Alguls appear in old necropolises and crypts. Immunity. Immune to common poisons and resistant to knockdown attempts. Susceptibility. Sensitive to silver. The strong style is most effective against all ghouls. Experienced witches use the group style while fighting multiple ghouls. Tactics. All ghouls try to knock down their victims and eat them alive. Alchemy. Cadaverine, white vinegar and algal marrow. All ghouls are ghouls which had been devouring corpses for so many years that human flesh becomes irresistible they begin to prey on the living. They are seen in crypts and on battlefields, frequently surrounded by ghouls. Simple folk do not notice the difference between these two types of scavengers. Unlike witchers, who know that the al ghoul is a more aggressive and challenging opponent. The Archispore Occurrence Archispores grow in places where particularly cruel crimes have been committed, or on the tombs of the victims of such crimes. Immunity. Immune to all mind effects, fear, stun or axi. They feel no pain and cannot be poisoned, blinded, knocked down or bled to death. Susceptibility. Archispore are sensitive to silver and very susceptible to incineration attempts. Tactics. Archaspores shoot poisoned forms. Alchemy. Archaspores choose and spores. Some crimes are so terrible that they fill people with terror and offend the gods. The criminal's ill will and the cruelty of his deed conceive a curse that brings the Archaspore to life. The beast attacks innocent creatures hatefully, trying to take vengeance until justice is done. A gulp of water, and let's continue. The Barghest. Occurrence. Barghests are ghosts which come from the underworld only when summoned. Immunity. Barghests are fearless and cannot be poisoned. Coming from the underworld, they acquire bodies, so they can be stunned and experience pain, although they are somewhat resistant to those effects. Susceptibility. Bar guests are sensitive to silver and very susceptible to knockdown attempts. The fast style is the most efficient against bar guests. My experienced witches use the group style while fighting multiple bar guests. Tactics They try to surround the opponent and work as a group. Where one bar guest appears, more will follow. Alchemy Beast Fangs, Ectoblasm, and Death Dust. People say that Vargas are spectres which materialize as ghastly dogs and persecute the living. 
According to some folk tales, these monsters are the scouts of the wild fun. Other legends say the ghost appears as a sign of divine retribution and embody revenge. However, all tales agree on one point. Vargas showed the living no mercy. The Bletsuga, or, well, pronounce it how you want. Occurrence. Swamps and marshes. Immunity. Immune to poison, low resistance to stun attempts. Susceptibility. Sensitive to silver and fire. The strong cell is most effective against those monsters. Experience switches born, born against using the group style of fighting multiple Blitzrigas. Tactics. A dying Blitzriga explodes, spraying acid on its opponent. A skilled witch is able to kill the monster while evading the explosion. Or uses the explosion to kill some other mobs. Alchemy. A animation lymph. Albar's crystals. Blood Suga blood. The monster. A grotesque monster from the swamps causes terror among peasants. Because it pours digestive juices over the bones of those who are still alive. And then dines in the half digested intestines. Ugh, God. The Semitor. Occurrence. Semitors are rare. They are found on battlefields and, cement and cemeteries, just like other necrophages. They are immune to common poisons, resistance to knockdown and stun attempts. Sensitive to silver and necrophage oil. Semitors try to knock down their victims and eat them alive. Semitor draws white vinegar and aboni abomination lymph. Much has been written about ghouls and graveers, since they are encountered by common people in times of war or in cemeteries. Cemetaries are rare, but when they appear in necropolis, they take it over. All ghouls respect them, must bow to them. Devourer. Devourers are scavengers which live near human settlements, usually in caves and ruins. You are an ugly one. Immune to conventional poisons and resistance to resistant to knockdown attempts. Sensitive to silver necrophage oil. Devourers try to knock down their victims and eat them alive. And you can gain shadow dust, cadaverine, albus crystals and de and devourer teeth. Devourers are often called night witches because they resemble old ugly women and are famous for their witch-like viciousness. These creatures gorge themselves on human flesh, although they willingly eat carcasses. Above all they crave flesh that is fresh and warm. Devourers hunt after dark in groups that peasants refer to as sabbaths. They like to deceive the victims and torture them. But there is no truth to the tale of their midnight flights on broomsticks and their gingerbread houses. So that's only, so that's only an, a fairy tale? Wow. Drown dead. The drowned dead are creatures of the night. They appear on the banks of ponds, lakes and rivers and swamps. Immune to bleeding, blinding and poison attempts. They are fearless, immune to stun attempts and the axis sign. Sensitive to silver and susceptible to knockdown attempts. The pastel is most efficient against the drowned dead. Experienced witches use the group style of fighting multiple drowned dead. These creatures poison their victims with cadaverine. They often attack as a group. Cadaverine for alchemy. Ginets, acid and drowned dead's tongue. Particularly strong and dangerous drowners are known as the drowned dead. Not the walking dead, the drowned one. Simple people see no difference between the drowned and 
between the Drowner and the Drowned Dead. Encountering either of them is equally deadly. We might suppose though, that the most gloomy legends con concern the Drowned Dead rather than Drowners. Drowner. Drowners are creatures of the night. They appear on the banks of ponds, lakes and rivers. Immune to bleeding, blinding and poison attempts, feelers immune to stun attempts and the axe sign. Same text over again. Usually attacked in large groups and drawn up all, but they give drawn up brain tissue, peanuts acid and cadaverine. Drowners are scoundrels who ended their wicked life in the water. Drown the life or thrown into deep water after death, turn into vengeful creatures, which stalk the inhabitants of coastal settlements. The Echinops. Echin Echinops are grown in places where crimes have been committed or on the graves of the victims of such crimes. Immune to any effect which influences the mind, fears them, axi, feel no pain and can neither be poisoned, blinded, knocked down, nor bled to death. Susceptibility Echinopsae are sensitive to silver and highly susceptible to incineration attempts. Echinopsae are rooted to the ground, but they shoot with poisoned horns. Echinops rootstock and spores can be gained. Echinopsae are monstrous plants which grow in places with terrible Crimes have been committed. The beasts try to take their vengeance on criminals. They do not spare the lives of innocents who haplessly enter their territory. The Frightener. Haven't we read that one? Yes, we have. That I remember. That goo. Ghouls are encountered on battlefields as well as in cemeteries and abandoned crypts. Resistance to common poisons. Sensitive to silver and necrophage oil. A strong style is most effective against ghouls. Experienced witches use the group style while fighting multiple enemies. Ghouls. A group of ghouls will try to knock an opponent down, surrounding him and starting eating him alive. The animation lymph, white vinegar and ghoul blood can be gained. Ghouls are said to have been humans, who were once forced into cannibalism, and after many years spent in dark crypts, underwent a horrifying transformation. Only human flesh can satisfy their eternal hunger, so they kill people and saw the remains in the recesses of their lairs. The Golem. A golem is a creature made of stone or wood, brought to life by a mage and animated with the use of magic. Its tough body is immune to sword blows and most effects. A golem can be stopped by its maker. Usually the giant is set in motion by a lightning bolt, so a major electric shock might incapacitate or even annihilate it. The golem uses its superhuman strength to knock down, stun and crush opponents. And again can be a golem obsidian heart. Once an absent-minded mage created a golem, animated it by casting Alzur's thunder and ordered his new servant to fetch water before burying himself in his shoulder box. The golem kept carrying water day and night without pause, and ultimately flooded not only the mayor's house, but the whole city. As you can see, my young student of the art, improper use of tools and a lack of elementary training may cause a tragedy, so watch out. Annabelle Redfind lectures on security and hygiene in magic. And another another model of the year, the Gravier. Graviers appear wherever they can find food, preferably human corpses, but any carcass will do. Immune to common poison and resistant to knockdown attempts. 
Tough skin and thick muscles protect them from blows. Sensitive to silver and necrophage or the strong stars, most effective against graviers. Graviers try to knock their victims down and eat them alive, like all necrophages. Cadaverine, white vinegar and gravier bone can be gained. After the war with Wolfgods, Graviers became a real plague until the monsters were until the monsters were familiar only to the specialists and professional beast killers. Thus everyone mistook them for ghouls. Today any child could give an accurate description of a gravier. The people who have passed near battlefields or necropolises offer first hand accounts of the horrible murders committed by these ruthless necrophages. The Hellhound nightly appears wherever dishonorable people live. Immune to most effects, it is a corporal creature, so knockdown or stun attempts are possible, yet rarely successful. Sensitive to steel, the fast style is most efficient, most effective against hellhounds. Able to summon bar guests, a hellhound traps its victim in a circle of fire and proceeds to tear them to pieces. Iridescent Mark can be gained. The Hellhound referred to also as the beast is a creature of the underworld, a spectre that assumes the form of a terrifying hound and tirelessly stalks its victim once it finds the trail. Peasants believe that the Hellhound embodies the vengeance of the gods, who sent the beast to punish humans for their wickedness. The Koshche, a mythical creature born of magic, only a mighty mage who knows Alzur's work can summon a Koshche. Resistance to most effects and susceptible to silver. This relentless killing machine has no need for tactics. How to kill it? Koshche heart can be gained. What, in your opinion, is the best way to describe a Koshche? Death. I'd call it death. That's easy. Night Wraith. The night, the night Wraith appears on fields and, and meadows. It can be found after dark when the moon is high. They are spectres, but at the same time they maintain a strong connection with the natural world. They see the living, but cannot understand them, because the dead cannot hear the living. Immune to blinding poison pain and bleeding attempts, they are fearless. Sensitive to silver and spectre oil. They are able to grasp the moonlight and blind their enemies with it. Death dust, shadow dust and ectoplasm can be gained. Night refs are born of moonlight. Wind and the earth cooling after the heat of the day. They rise above the ground and whirl in a mad dance. It should not be seen by any mortal. If caught peeping, the mortal is blinded by moonlight and taken into the circle and forced to dance until he expires, at times becoming a night wraith himself. The noon wraith. Noon wraith's hound cultivated fields and meadows. They always appear when the sun is high. They are spectres, but at the same time they maintain a strong connection to the natural world. Is the living that can understand them, saint. Immune to blinding, poison, pain and bleeding. They are fearless. Sensitive to silver and spectre oil. They are able to grasp sun rays and blind the enemies with them. Death dust, shimmering dust and ectoplasm can be gained. Noon raves are born at high noon. Out of heat, sadness, and the sweat of plowmen. In the hot air above the fields, they gather to dance madly, creating air vortexes. But the spectres dislike being watched. Those who peep are forced to dance with them. Noon waves stop the dance when the sun goes down. Once the abduction mortal is long dead from fear and exhaustion. Death the rigor. As Trigger is a woman transformed into a monster by curse. She is filled with hatred towards all living beings, devouring them gladly. As Trigger may tolerate necrophages. She needs a hideout during the day, often choosing a 
sarcophagus in the forgotten branch of a crypt. Resistance to steel. Sensitive to silver. A trigger may be freed from a curse. I would also survive a night near her sarcophagus. A trigger is a very strong and agile creature. But not as resilient as she might seem. She attacks by surprise and tries to tear opponents to pieces without giving them the chance to fight back. Near sarcophagus, near sar near sarcophages, the trigger is always stronger. A trigger heart can be gained. Where does it come from? Spells? Magic? I have no idea, sire. The sage has researched these phenomena. For us witchers, it is enough to know that strong will may create them. We also like to know how to fight them. And kill them? Most frequently, yes. That is what we usually paid for. If you want the spell lifted, people usually just want to be protected. If the monsters kill people, revenge may be another motive. Now let's go to the werewolf. Werewolf is a Lycanthropes, which means that they are shape changes. Human transform into werewolves as a result of curses. The creature lurk near human settlements. They are resistant to steel and most effects. Sensitive to silver. They attack with fury and like to be on the offensive. Confident of the resistance to conventional weapons. Werewolf fur can be gained. Baron Wolfenstein buried his face in his hands. His heart was throbbing. Suddenly, the scent of his wife's blood and the blood of his children intensified. The Baron's body swelled as his muscles grew. His noble attire fell in tatters on the marble floor. My beloved, you, you are so hairy. You are a werewolf. Oh, Bianca went pale. Oops. What about our love? In reply, she heard a terrifying roar. Daniel Stone, the curse of Baron Wolfstein and other love stories. Well, we have only two left, so I would say let's go quickly. Wolves live in the wilderness. When they are hungry, they approach human settlements and hunt farm animals. No immunities. So skeptical to knockdown attempts, the fast sounds most effective against wolves experienced witches use the group style. Wolves attacking groups using their numerical superiority to their advantage. Beast fangs and beast liver. There was so much snow that winter that we had to dig tunnels just to get to the privy and had icicles in our pants by the time we got back. Wolves came out of the forest, ate the cattle. Then surrounded the house. They were howling madly. Surrounded by that pack of wolves, they felt like three little pigs. Wraith. Wraiths hunt the places where they died or were buried. They are spectres, which do not belong in this world. Sometimes they are summoned by magic, but more frequently, unfinished business makes them linger in our world. Immune to blinding and bleeding attempts, they are fearless and immune to poison, pain and knockdown attempts. Sensitive to silver and spectre oil. The suffering experienced by a wraith makes the wound once it inflicts more painful. Death does an ectoplasm can be gained. If you want to get rid of a wraith, you must first find its body, then searching an unhallowed ground or in the corner of the cemetery where outlaws are buried. If you dig up the corpse, you'll discover that it's not rotten, that there's blood on its, li on its lips. Pierce the corpse with an aspen stake, cut off the head and place it between the corpse's legs. To make certain that the wraith will never return, set the corpse on fire. One false step will mean your demise. So now we learn quite a lot about the monsters of the Witcher. I hope that was. Well, I hope it was fun for you, and that hopefully we see each other again in the next probably episode of the Witcher, where we'll finally make the content that well that I made while my game crashed. So see you in the next one.